Hi everyone, this is Yasarian. Welcome to another edition of my Time Splitters 2 modding tutorial. We're going to be picking up where we left off last time and continuing to mod story mode levels. In this case, we're resuming modding uh, Siberia. Last time we changed a few things about it, like the name, music, briefing, all that stuff. This time around, we're going in depth further. We're going to go ahead and completely uh, change enemies, the guns they carry, and some of the objectives. A lot of the meat of the level itself. So it should be pretty fun and exciting. First things first, go into the Time Splitters 2 uh, document as always. We're going to want to scroll over. Go over to the Spawns tab, which is near the end of the document. This contains a ton of information about enemies, um, like where they spawn, what makes them spawn, the difficulty they spawn at, what weapon they have, what enemy type they are from the level's bot set or character list, how much ammo they drop, and a lot of, there, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, it's honestly really complex. I'll try to go, every, go over everything bit by bit and uh, help out with it as we go through. So we're going to scroll down past all this stuff. Like, no, we're looking for Siberia. Okay, there we go. Now, Siberia has a lot of different enemies, a lot of different enemy types, so there's a lot we can do with it here. We've got the regular Siberian soldiers, the gas mask special guys, the zombies, the hybrid mutant, and then a ton of guns like the flamethrower, the mines, the 12 gauge. So uh, we're going to continue that whole crime theme we were doing in the last one. And we're just going to, uh, we're going to give the level a different feel through that. So let's start off with a simple change. We're going to take the enemies in the opening bit of the level with those in buildings and the uh, radar. We're going to give them shotguns, 12 gauges, and we're going to make them drop a small amount of ammo, whereas normally they drop a lot. So these guys right here with zero, zero as their weapon, they are carrying pistols. We've got about um, eight different weapons in this level's weapon set, including the temporal uplink. Pistol is zero, and the 12 gauge is one. And also, some of these enemies uh, are only happen if you trigger an alarm. So we're gonna change them too, just to just to keep the levels feel going. All right, so start out. We're going to click on this right here. This is where the offset where the first enemy of Siberia can be found. We can use the hex calculator if we want to uh, make it easier to find the different uh, flags and things we're looking for, but for right now, we'll just keep it simple. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out uh, what enemy or gun is being used. So, next thing, we go to HXD, we go to this offset, which is 2E9810, and we're going to change his weapon from a pistol to a 12 gauge. We're also going to change the amount of ammo he drops, which is F. I think that's a that's a large amount of ammo. We're going to change it to 9, which only gives you uh, a few shots, 3 to 5. I, I did that a lot in uh, the Haunted Edition mod. I'm not sure what all these different ammo dropped uh, things mean. It's kind of tricky to figure that out because they don't necessarily line up with what you'd think they are. Sometimes it drops more ammo than the number would suggest, or the character would suggest. So now that you're in HXD, go into the search, go to, plug in offset 2E9810, hit OK. We'll be taken there. Now, these lines decide a lot of stuff about the character. This is what difficulty and what circumstances they spawn in. I believe that um, the next is the location number, yeah. Then after that is the bot type and the gun, and then ammo dropped. So 
Over here, this indicates that it's Captain Snow. This indicates that he's carrying a silenced pistol. We change this to one, so now he has a shotgun. This is his ammo. Change this to nine, now he only drops a few shells. So we're just going to do this for the opening area of the level. All the enemies are going to be carrying shotguns. Now, from here, you can go back to the document and look for the next enemy, who is uh, Nikolai at 2E9860. It's all, you can also try to guess where they are, because uh, enemies usually follow a particular order, and you can usually see where they're divided up based on similar things, like uh, there's a 042B here, a 042B here, 0B80 here. So usually you can use guesswork to figure out where uh, the character will be. So like right here, this indicates that he is bot number zero, which is Nikolai. Right here is the weapon again. Make this one. This is the ammo. Nope, <laughs> wrong number right there. Make that nine, which is good. So following this pattern, that means that this is the weapon for the next enemy, and this is the ammo. Do it again. And again with the next one. Now this next enemy is carrying the sniper rifle and has a different type of ammo, so we're not going to do anything with them. We're going to leave them be. But there is an enemy after that. I believe there are a few guys that come out if you have the alarm sound off, like if a camera spots you. Let's see, let's check the document again and see how far it goes down. Yeah, there are three enemies that uh, sound that can come up if uh, the alarm goes off. So that means that we've changed all of the opening enemies so they all carry shotguns, which could make the fights a little with them a little trickier. We're going to change a few enemies so uh, their character is different. We're going to do it on the walk up. I'm tempted to make them zombies, but I don't know how well that would fit with the general uh, crime theme. So we're going to make them into uh, captains. In this case, we're going to change these to uh, Sergeant Shivers. Now let's see. Their spawn flags are 380. Now, this is something I want to explain as well. Spawn flags can determine uh, under what difficulty the enemy appears. If it's just 80, they only appear on easy mode. If it's just 100, they only appear in normal mode. If it's just 200, they only appear in hard mode. But you can combine these to make them appear at multiple difficulties. 300 means they appear in normal and hard mode. 380 means they appear in all three modes. So that can be good for figuring out under which circumstances an enemy shows up. So this Sergeant Shivers is located at 2E9BD0. We are going to go back to HXD. We're going to change him and the Sergeant Shivers below him into captains. Back in HXD. Go to search. Go to 2E9BD0. Enter that. Over here, this is where the character is. We're going to give him the number, the value of 4, which is Captain Snow, the soldier with the white mask. We're also going to change the one below him, which is uh, 2E9C20 into Captain Snow. Usually it's pretty easy to follow the pattern because the enemies have like a certain amount of values and you can change these accordingly just by following the pattern. All right, we've changed these two. We're gonna save, we haven't saved yet. It's important to back up your work. All right, to show you again, at the back of the document, if you scroll over, you can see a lot of different values here and they can affect many things about 
enemies. Like this determines whether in a level an enemy will target another enemy. This seems to be very uh, specific. I'm not sure how to do it like individually or if you can make that customized. This determines whether or not an enemy, uh, whether an enemy is relevant to an objective or many other things. Also, whether they spawn if you were within sight of them. Having an ammo drop of all Fs, which is equal to negative one, makes it so that the enemy just drops the default amount of ammo, like an arcade or map maker. If it's uh, seven Fs and then E, that means it won't drop any ammo at all. All right. So, in an earlier version of this video, I tried replacing the... Um, I tried making it so that you destroyed the melons to complete an objective, but that didn't work out, so I'm gonna stick with what I know. I'm going to turn an item into an additional uh, filing cabinet and make that another thing to hunt for the players to hunt down. I'm going to replace one more item that would be about at the same height. The green crate at 2E766C. Go into HXD, enter that in. 2E766C. Now that, we're going to give that the ID of the filing cabinet, which is 1D6. So right here, you can see its ID. 1DF, change it to 1D6. Its flag is 0380. Gonna add a 1 to the start of that because that's also what the filing cabinets have. Keep its uh, X, Y, and Z position the same because I uh, don't want to mess around with that. You can change where it's located, but it is necessary. And for placement function, we're going to give it the placement function of 800D13C0. And that can be located at 2E7690. Alright. Save that. Hopefully it'll work. Because uh, the previous tests, the giving it the melons to blow up didn't, unfortunately. So I'm hopeful that a simple change like this will instead work out better. Alright. So... Let's go ahead and change those objectives. The correct listings can be found at the 1157DD70 offset. I got the wrong offset the first time, but that's the problem. It's a little tough to tell. You sort of have to guess and test. You can leave a space at the end if you want, as long as you don't get rid of the periods in the middle. And that decides like uh, when there's a line break and when the objective goes into the next row of text. Let's test it out in-game.
All right, that should do it. That was a pretty tough episode. Like, there was a lot to get through in that, but thank you for sticking through it to the end. This should help you get a good grip on how to change levels. Not all that information will be, like, available for all levels, since they're uh, laid out differently and they don't always have the same amount of stuff. Like, as I said before, Return to Planet X only has a few enemies loaded, but there's still a lot you can do changing around objectives and, like, what it's counting and everything like that. You can really change up the game, and I hope that this helps other people accomplish that. So I'm planning on doing one more episode, maybe two. Uh, next one will cover texture modding, which won't involve HXD. It'll involve more of Paint.net and similar programs. So thanks again for tuning in. Hope you got something out of this. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.